It all began with assimilation. They forced our children away to school. Sego, my name is uh, Duat Galakwa. I live in Okazasne on State Road and in Berkeley. My Mohawk name is uh, Sogiat Diosta. I sit on the Bear Clan in the Longhouse. I grew up on the shores of the St. Lawrence River in the village of uh, Ganadago. And uh, that's where we grew up at that time. And there was a lot of culture then. And My name is Joseph Jr. Wawate. I'm Algonquin. Uh, I live uh, in Kukumville. Uh, Michael Pike, Ahunyaha. A Mohawk Nation member, Turtle Clan. And my mother got sent to Spanish when she was nine, when her mother died. And then uh, my father got sent to Augensburg to live with the nuns till he was five. My mother's uh, mother, um, her name was uh, Mary Jacobs. Uh, she went to Shinwak Residential School in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, and it's there that uh, her and her sister went, and she was six, and her sister was three when they were taken away from here in Okazasne. And neither one of them returned until they were uh, teenagers. And my grandmother was 17 before she returned to Okazasne. And she never came back to visit in all those years. So she had to um, be reintroduced to her family. And um, she had to learn how to speak the Mohawk language all over again, because she had lost it. After my mom died, we were sent to residential school, me and my brother, there were three of us. And we'd been there for about uh, a year and a half, two years. and. Uh, it was a very sad time, you know. There was a lot of uh, discrimination there, physical abuse, mental abuse, but somehow we managed to survive it. The first school I went to was called Mohawk um, Residential School, which was situated in uh, Brantford. Uh, it was known as the Mushroom because they gave us oatmeal uh, seven days a week. That's the first one I went to. I went to that one for about two years. Then I went to one in North Bay for about a month. Then I ran away from that one. Then I went to the one in uh, outside of uh, Montreal called Shawbridge. Of all three, that was the best one. I spent a couple years in there. Then I wound up back home. I went to uh, Amos, uh, St. Mac de Figuerie. Uh, it's a French school. Uh, it's past uh, Valdor. They sent me there because I had to learn French. They had to send me to school, uh, which the reserve didn't have no, re no schooling. And they didn't want to bring us to, uh, I guess, uh, more like uh, in a public school uh, where non-native go to. So they sent us to a special school where native people used to go home. To a school where they will learn a history filled with lies. Well, their spirits be... Well, I know my dad. When he had to talk, his language, he got caught talking. They made him sit in the court with a dunce cap on. And that's what came home to homeless. That, it seemed like that's what's going to happen to me if I talk my language. So it was really hard. My mother didn't talk about it. I know my mother had it the worst, but she never showed what happened. She never talked about it. My mother always tried to show us love, even though she didn't. She only knew love until she was nine years old with her mother. I didn't realize that um, my grandmother's lack of affection for her grandchildren was because um, she was never shown affection in residential school. And I think the way that it affects me now is that um, I have to make a conscious effort to show affection. 
on my father's side, it was his uh, grandfather who went to residential school. And they were all about just working and drinking. So a lot of those behaviors, um, I'm sure still affect a lot of the generations, and including myself, um, on how we behave, what our behaviors are. It made me a stronger person. I, 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 I kind of use my mind. I stayed away from drugs and alcohol and all that. And I haven't touched it yet. So it kind of makes me a stronger person, makes me more aware of what's going around me, you know. I just don't take life for granted, you know. speak our language because of that. We didn't learn a lot of culture. I missed out on that until I turned 18. When I turned 18, I started going to Longhouse because I wanted to see what I was missing. And now, it's been about three years. After 30 years, I'm starting to learn more of my language and my culture and the ceremonies. And that's where I want to be. I don't want to be sitting in church trying to learn what the priest did to my family. They hide it. They don't want anybody to know what they actually did. My mom spoke to me, Algonquin, every day, every summer, uh, whenever we get uh, a vacation, sort of, from the boarding home. So uh, we come home, we don't talk French, we don't talk English, we talk Algonquin. We we didn't know what we were, uh, you know, what we were getting into. There was a lot of uh, abuse when we got there, physical abuse, mental abuse. Uh, yeah, I guess you can say sexual abuse too. But uh, sticking together as brothers, that's what uh, uh, kept us together. Huh? And uh, right now, there's a lot of healing going on because of this. And. Um, the things that keep me going is uh, going back into uh, the longhouse and our traditional ways and learning the teachings and stuff. That's what kept me strong. Other people have gotten into alcohol or drugs, but I just happened to stay away from all that. Uh, it was hard for us uh, to live there. We didn't eat uh, the right food that we had to live. Uh, like uh, We couldn't eat the things that we wanted to, to eat, like we eat beaver, moose meat, uh, Things like that, uh, over there, we had no choice, uh, either eat lamb, pork, uh, chicken, uh, things like that, and on weekends we had a chance to go hunting uh, with our slingshot uh, to kill a rabbit or partridge, at least that we were able to eat, which is, uh, was good. We ran away many times, always, we always ran uh, on the railway track, but we always got caught. And when we got caught, we were disciplined by the strap, everything. And when I was in North Bay, I stole a bike and I pedaled uh, 400 and something miles to get home. <laughs> but uh, it's always that uh, abandonment issue that keeps coming up, you know, being away from your family and, and, and everything. You always want to get home. Uh. So that's a problem too, that abandonment issue. It's always in the back of your head. Why were we abandoned? Huh? But that's why I think where we always ran away to try to get home. Uh, they used to force us to go to the Catholic Church every Sunday. They actually forced us. They'd make us put on suit. They'd make us put on. Uh, they used to comb our hair. We used to look like really pretty, sort of, to go to church. And. I didn't feel right when I was there. So I never really wanted to go to church because I knew in me that uh, I know my own ceremonies too. And uh, so since I was a kid, I learned uh, by looking at uh, the elders. We were there, there was about maybe 30, 40 Haudenosaunee people or Iroquois, some people call them, or, uh, and there was 300 Cree Indians that were there. So when we were there, we went to two separate churches. We went to the, what do you call it? 
the Crees went to the Mohawk Chapel Church, and we went to the Anglican Church. So there was always that separation between us and them. Huh? But it seems like once we got back together, we always start fighting with each other. <laughs> yeah, they would make us get on our knees and pray and do all that. And there's a picture of her being 13 and how she had her language and her culture stripped away from her. And how now it be, has become my job to put it back into our women. Why didn't uh, anybody uh, come over there and uh, kind of see what was really going on? Huh? Their policy was to kill the Indian and save the man. And that's why I'm here to show that they didn't kill me. We're survivors. Uh, it's in our memory. I mean, we can't erase that memory. You could forgive. Because in our ceremonies, we learn how to forgive those people. But we can't forget. It's hard to forget. It all began with assimilation. They forced our children away to school.